all and good morning. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from home. I uh, just got back from the doctor's office and it was a good, it was a good visit to the doctor. I went um, to the doctor in June. Um, prior to that, I had not been to the doctor for over two years. Um, and in June got some Got some lousy news. It, it, it was it, it was a lot of lousy news. Um, my uh, my diabetes has gotten out of control. Um, several other things I was having problems with. It was the uh, probably the most unhealthy I'd ever been. Um, I had uh, been pretty bad um, about taking care of myself uh, when I was on the road. Um, you know, I got tons of excuses. It is difficult on on the road to eat healthy. It is difficult to take care of yourself when you're constantly driving, constantly moving around. It's harder than just if um, you, you know, are in one place and, and have a home. But at the same time, you know, it is an excuse because, you know, I was making the decision. Um, like I said, I've said before, I was probably eating fast food meals two or three times a day. I was constantly eating junk from gas stations. I remember like I would go to the gas station, before I go to a hotel, I would stop at the gas station, get a couple of candy bars, a couple of full-size candy bars. I would eat multiple candy bars a day. It was really kind of spiraling because like I, I, I used to not eat that bad, but something about being on the road, I know um, a lot of times and just with the fast food, it would be like getting out of, uh, I don't know, like especially like haunt season got really bad because I would get out of the haunts late and McDonald's would be the only thing open. I don't even really like McDonald's that much, but I would end up eating it. And um, I was always in such a hurry because I was always on to the next place. I was always just looking for places that had drive through windows so I could get the food as fast as possible and shove it in my mouth as fast as possible. And previously I had, um, you know, I'd managed my diabetes. My diabetes was on track with my medication, but I was not being checked, not keeping up with it, um, not going to the doctor. It got to the point where the doctor, um, they were pretty much threatening to like not give me my prescriptions anymore if I didn't come in. So it was June of this year that I, that I finally uh, came in um, got the bad news and and made some choices, made some choices, made some changes. Um, that was was prescribed some medication to uh, to help me out, and fortunately, um, medication also helps me lose weight. But at the same time, I um, changed my diet pretty very drastically compared to how I ate. I've changed my diet very drastically. I've um, tried to, get, to, to, to eat as little carbs as possible, try to avoid bread, try to avoid um, sugar. And I do want to say, like, I'm not giving advice on this channel on how to live healthy, how to eat well. I'm just explaining how I do it. You know, a lot of people um, have made comments like, you shouldn't eat that way. It will, it's bad for your cholesterol. It's bad for this. I'm kind of tuned something that like plays to my strengths and, 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 you know, overcomes, you know, my weaknesses. Um, I don't have problems with my cholesterol. I don't have problems with my, with my blood pressure. That's all just genetically taken care of very well. Um, not because I'm good about it, just because that's my natural um, genetics, my natural body, the way it works. I just don't have problems with those things. Um, the things I do have problems with is, you know, I am diabetic and those things. So the cutting the sugar, cutting the carbs, that works really good for me. I would definitely, if I did have advice, it would be, um, it would be to, to, to do the research and find something that you think you can do. There's lots of different ways to live healthier. Um, most of them work if you can do them. Um, but just be being realistic to yourself. Find one that you think you can do, you think you can follow through with and um, not give up on. And I think it's important to give yourself leeway too. If you, I think a lot of people, if they don't do it perfectly, they give up. And that's one thing 
that I've decided is is it's okay. Like it's okay if I want to have a meal, if I want to have a donut hot dog at the uh, at the state fair, then um, then I'll do it. Um, but uh, at the same time, you uh, you know you don't do that every day. You don't just eat garbage every day because you're in a hurry. Um, so I've, I've slowed down, tried to eat, eat better when I can. Um, when I want to eat something bad, I make sure it's something I really want to do and not just something that I'm doing just because, if that all makes sense. But I got some good news today. Um, my blood sugar is down. It's in an excellent place. Um, I, um, going off one of my medications, I'm staying on one of my medications, but going off another, my cholesterol's good. I've lost about 30 pounds. Um, I lost a lot of weight right off the bat. Um, and then it's kind of evened out. I don't know that I'm at even losing weight anymore, but that's okay because I'm not really concerned with just being thin or my, you know, physical appearance. I think I look fine. Um, I'm happy with my looks. I it just, my health is what's important. So that means a lot more to me getting the, uh, getting the good news, um, from the doctor's office, um, having my doctor be happy with me, having, you know, that encouraging, uh, feedback. So, uh, yeah, so, so that's all good news and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm happy that I'm finally going down the, the right path after a couple years of really, really being off track. Um, and I, and I just, you know, for what it's worth, um, I would just encourage people, um, take care of yourself. I did not take care of myself. Um, I made excuses and, um, now that I've been better to myself, now that I've taken care of myself, I feel better. I'm more awake. My mood's better. It, it, it really does a lot. It really is beneficial. Um, and I thought for years that I couldn't do it, that I, that I couldn't bear, that I was addicted to food, that I, that I needed to eat whatever I wanted. And I just think it's, it's just a few changes from, so from June, I went from being in a very scary place with my physical health to now being in a very good place with my physical health. That was that was June. What is it now? It is November. So it was six months. Six months I was able to turn things around very drastically. And I think, um, I hope that can be encouraging to other people out there who may be, um, you know, kind of going down a path of making bad decisions to know that you can turn it around and you can turn it around in a, in a fairly short period of time. If you, as long as you take it serious, as long as you're willing to prioritize it because, um, I want to live as long as I can. I want to be healthy. Um, and I want to feel good. I, 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 I there was a period of time past couple of years where I was just feeling exhausted all the time and I'm just able to get more out of life because of, uh, because of some changes. So hope, hope can, hopefully that can be encouraging to someone out there, but, um, Let's just take a quick peek. There's, you know, not a huge update on the house, but I'll just take you guys up uh, upstairs and uh, show you uh, where we're at with the moving in. Okay, so obviously things are all askew. Um, still been a lot of unpacking going on, but the important thing is we at least have an area in which to live. Got the uh, living room set up. The uh, the cats are doing better. The cats seem to be doing good. How are you doing, Cammy? Can you tell the people how things are going? You doing okay? They hid. They only hid for about a day or so. And of course, they had their uh, tumultuous adventure in the car. But they've been exploring. They love all the boxes. They love climbing on the boxes. Climbing inside of the boxes. I don't know if Scarlet's off hiding somewhere. She tends to, to go into hiding for a good portion of the day. But yeah, we have our living room set up. I got Jen that the other night when I was coming back from uh, from uh, Gatlinburg. Stopped at Bucky's and got her that pillow. Um, decided to move the fish tank up here to the living room. 
I wanted to move it up upstairs, and it was Jen's idea. Jen moved it over into this corner, and I think that's the perfect location for it. I'll just have to get that cleaned up and get um, get some fish. <laughs> oh, and I did want to thank uh, a handful of people in the comment section. Um, I did a video showing my old uh, old family photos, and I was picturing me as a kid holding this gremlin. I had no idea what it was, but uh, several people were able to identify it as part of the Black Star toy line. It is known as the Space Demon, and um, I had fond memories of the Space Demon as a kid, so I hopped on eBay, and it was uh, a little under 10 bucks, and just ended up ordering it for uh, for nostalgia sakes. So I have the uh, the Space Demon as a uh, as a housewarming gift to myself. What you doing, Cammy? Cammy and Scarlett both have been enjoying their gingerbread house. This is, uh, of course, Jen's the big Star Wars nerd. So we got the uh, Star Wars gingerbread house there. Hey, Cammy, you enjoying the new place? No? I don't know. I thought you were doing pretty good. And yeah, the scrambler is inside. We do plan on setting it up as a piece of furniture. Um, I want to put something underneath to prop it up just a little bit. Maybe like a stack of boards or something to, to just give it a little bit of height so that the, the foot thing can dangle a little bit. Now I posted a video, I shared a video of the uh, the Scrambler from, uh, from Coney Island, from Dino's Wonder Wheel Park, which was previously the Scrambler at um, Astroland in uh, in Texas and it's it's possible because it, what was told to me was this possibly came from Coney Island there's there was a possibility and it looks it's exact it's the same model it's unquestionably the same model whether or not it is the exact scrambler I cannot I cannot say there's no um, serial number that I've been able to find on it but if you look up footage of the old scrambler from Dino's uh, Dino's Wonder Wheel Amusement Park on on, the, on Coney Island in New York, um, you'll find uh, a near identical scrambler, and that scrambler's gone. I I looked; it's no longer listed as an active ride, so it is possible, which would be so cool if this was from Coney Island and Astroland. That would just be so amazing. I just don't know if there's a way that I can ever pin it down 100% to uh, to say uh, if this is that scrambler. I've, I've talked to uh, to Daryl who gave it to me. He was going to do a little bit of a detective work to see if he could get a little more info. Maybe we could pin it down. But um, yeah, any help I can get out there. If anyone try to help me uh, positively identify uh, this scrambler, I'd, I'd, love, I'd, I'd love the info. I can't take too much of the credit for getting things unpacked. Uh, Jen has been hard at work. I've been uh, doing a lot of filming. I've been trying to get back out there and film some things. I went over to uh, to Gatlinburg the other day. Um, I went last night. I was in uh, went out to Carowinds to film Winterfest. So Jen's been hard at work in the meantime while I'm out there trying to uh, to keep this channel running. She's been uh, unpacking and uh, organizing, she's much better at that than me anyways. I, 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 I get really stressed out when it's like, where do, where do these things go? Where do all these boxes go? Yeah, you're very overwhelmed too, trying to unpack boxes and, um, and, and figure out where everything goes. So uh, yeah, she's been doing a great job getting the house ready. And um, it's really, really starting to come together. Of course, it's, it's a lot of stuff, and I had a lot of stuff, and she has a lot of stuff, and we're, we're finding ways to, to intermingle that. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated, especially uh, when we get everything put together. I'd love to give you guys a, uh, a house tour. But um, tonight, tonight my plans are to go to the Waynesville Christmas Parade. Um, it's kind of a, uh, a, a small town tradition here in the South to have Christmas parades. Um, they do it on Main Street, so we're gonna head out there in, uh, in just a little bit. Uh, here we are at Main Street, 
in Waynesville, North Carolina, about an hour before the parade starts. You can see people already getting in position, getting their chairs ready. You can see the street itself has been closed off, so technically I'm walking down the uh, center of the street. Yeah, the past two years I've been on the road so much, I feel kind of detached from, uh, from Waynesville. You know, back in the day when I worked for Child Protective Services, I was, you know, much more involved with the community, much more involved with the goings-on in this small town. So I figured, now that we've moved back in, now that me and Jen have our home here in Waynesville, I figured I'd come down here to, uh, to Main Street, take in the Christmas parade, you know, local businesses, local people create floats and float them down Main Street here. Now Jen wasn't uh, wasn't feeling very well this evening. She decided to uh, to stay behind, but I still wanted to come out and uh, and enjoy the Christmas parade. And this Christmas parade is kind of a uh, kind of a I guess a southern tradition. You know, most places of the country, it's just too cold. It's too cold to do a parade um, in December. But I was fascinated when I moved here to the South, the idea of the Christmas parade. In fact, there's four different Christmas parades in this county, in this county alone. And um, I just, I love going to these when I first moved here. You just see such ingenuity, such creativity with the floats, such quirkiness with what uh, ends up coming down the street here. And uh, actually one year, a couple years ago, I forget, I wish I remember what year it was, but I actually decided I wanted to be a part of the local Christmas parade. So I actually uh, built a float. A, uh, a uh, friend of ours had an antique fire truck and we built a float for the Carpetbagger Channel. And I uh, rode down Main Street here with, with my kids, with uh, my daughter-in-law, and we uh, we rode down, and it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was just it was cool seeing the parade from that perspective. Yeah, in an hour, these streets will absolutely be packed, be lined with people coming to enjoy the Christmas parade. I'm curious though. I'm just asking people out there, wherever you're from, are Christmas parades a thing? If you, just to let me know where you're from and if you have. Christmas parades because you know Christmas is really you know it's really a you know a lot of places have parades but Christmas has you know all that all that magic with it that really I think adds to having a parade so leave a comment in the comment section where are you from do you have Christmas parades do you enjoy Christmas parades yeah Main Street Waynesville I tend to come down here and film sometimes just when I'm just when I'm thinking just when I have something to say or I used to do a lot of live streams back when I did more live streams. I'd like to come down here to Main Street to do those live streams. Yeah, it's fun being able to walk in the middle of the road. They, they, they'll clo they close this off quite a bit down here whenever they're having a festival or a parade. And um, give the people the ability to prance around in the street. Of course, looks like most of the businesses are open for the parade. There's Kilwin's Chocolate there. This uh, Davis Home Furniture. I um, bought a lot of furniture that I used at my house here. Of course, I don't have it anymore. My ex-wife took it, but it, it was nice furniture while it lasted. Of course, the most iconic things here in the town of Waynesville is this uh, Music Maker statue. Uh, the iconic uh, banjo player and uh, wash tub player there. Yeah, but this, this area has a huge history in uh, in mountain music, bluegrass, and uh, definitely love. I remember when they brought these sculptures in. Absolutely love them. Get a little closer look here. Love their their faces. Yeah, down here a lot of people. A lot of people down here already for the parade. They got their chairs set up here in the streets. 
I was really sad when the uh, the movie theater shut down the Strand. Now it's a uh, a real estate office, which is fine. I'm trying. You know, people need people need to buy houses, but you know, I already have a house. I wanna I wanna watch movies. This uh, bagel shop here, Times Square Bagel. So it used to be a quilt store, and I remember I'd come out here when I was doing my live streams at night, and they always had uh, this little cat that lived in the window who would always say hi to. Sadly, they closed down. No longer a quilt shop. Now, a bagel shop. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the cat's doing well somewhere else. Down on the end here, we have the Smoky Mountain Dog Bakery. The bakery for dogs, not of dogs. Down over this way, they have Town Hall, that giant Christmas tree out front. Also, the uh, police department is uh, stationed in this building. And I have not noticed this before. Let's take a peek, there's a statue here of some sort of uh, mountain lion. Oh, that's been, that's been added fairly recently. I've never seen that before. Oh no. Looks like the uh, teddy bear museum down here is, uh, is gone. Yeah, I would have shown you guys, but uh, you know, they didn't allow, uh, they didn't allow filming. Before the parade started, I figured I'd walk down here and uh, check my P.O. box at the uh, post office. Oh, look. What's that? Crammed with, uh, with junk. What's this, what's this? Always great coming down here and getting my mail. The sun is starting to set here on Waynesville. You can see people crowding the streets in order to get a good seat for the parade. And everybody knows the parade doesn't start until the popo shows up. There's the Grand Marshal of the parade, Captain Frederick Mervyn Hall, AKA Freddy. It's the teddy bear there strapped to the honor guard van. It's like Christmas, 4th of July, all wrapped up in one. Oh, look at that. That, uh, that van has shark's teeth. Fire trucks, very loud. Kids. Kids love the loud fire trucks. Oh jeez. There you go, you see a guy dressed like a Christmas tree there. Hey, Christmas! Uh, got some uh, roller skating. These are various town officials here. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Yeah, there's some more town officials there in that uh, SUV. Is the fifth grade spelling bee champions. You can tell because they have antennas like bees. No, not the bees. Oh, that dog's dressed like a bee too. Oh, love the costume characters. They're throwing out candy. See, we have a, a Christmas tree with presents on their feet. Got some snowmen. Oh, look at this happy bear here. Hey, bear! <laughs> yeah, I think fire trucks kind of the backbone to any small town Christmas parade. Oh jeez. Loud and hip. 
hypnotic. With that twirly thing on the front. The tow truck, the different local businesses, of course. Advertiser businesses through the parade floats. Got Rudolph right there. Have the uh, Grinch mobile there. It's Haywood Lodge and Retirement Center. Parade has uh, apparently caught a log jam down here. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna go walk down here and catch up with the parade. Okay, the parade must have got slowed down because they were having to stop to do dance performances down here. Oh, look at this. There's some roller skate break dancing going on. That's pretty awesome. Oh, wow. Giant roll, giant inflatable roller skate rolling down the street there. Who's that? Who's that little piggy back there? More, more fire trucks. Christmas story themed float. Oh, that's pretty cool. They have the, the leg lamp, also the slide. It's like a mountain pediatric group. Ah, oh, it's very creative. Oh, look at this. We got a little tiny, little tiny horse there. So that's uh, Waynesville's version of Little Sebastian. It's the Special Olympics there. They have the Olympic torch. Yeah, the Grinch on the back of the truck there. Oh, look at that, it's another Grinch. <laughs> How could there be two Grinches? It's the U.S. farm labor float. Look at that. Love the energy here. We got the Peanuts characters dancing away. Amazing. There's the 828 Bail Bonds. Again, featuring featuring the Grinch. Hope no fugitives are out here watching the parade or they might find themselves in trouble. Oh, look at that. We have Grinch, Grinch number three. This is always a crowd pleaser. The uh, Remax float and the hot air balloon torch. Oh yeah, look at that. Feel the heat. That's a lot of fun. Could it be? Could it be? Oh, there we have it. Grinch, Grinch number four. Generally in Christmas parades, there is a standing rule that there is one Santa. The parade usually ends with Santa. No one within the parade is to dress like Santa in order to avoid any confusion on who the real Santa is. This apparently does not apply to the Grinch. Four Grinches. Okay, I guess make that, make that five Grinches. Five Grinches. Oh, what's he Grinching at? He's barking. I guess you can never have too many Grinches. Oh, look at this, they're blasting, blasting the crowd with snow over here. Race this way! Yeah, shoot some snow this way! Race this way! Race this way! Oh, there we go. Blast a little snow in our direction. Domino's car. Looks like they're throwing candy out though instead of uh, 
instead of pizza. Okay, I have officially, I've officially lost count of the number of Grinches lurking in this parade. What, gr what Grinch are we on? Oh, look at that. It's, it's a Grinch, I swear. I swear they're multiplied. The Grinch. It's the Habitat for Humanity float. We even built a little tiny habitat house for the back. Oh, that's interesting. For the Maggie Valley Restaurant and Hillbilly Jam. You can see it actually looks like a Christmas tree made out of a moonshine still. Oh, look at those people in the strange squirrel masks up there. This is for a sewer rat drain cleaning. Oh, look at that. They have Cousin Eddie there with his, uh, with his RV that he is, uh, he is currently emptying. They actually did pump, pump a clogged uh, drain in my house once. They, uh, they did a good job. There's Smiths grading and excavating, and they're pulling behind the manger. Oh, look at this, look at this happy lion. Hey, lion. Oh, there he goes. Oh, trying to, trying to scare us. Oh, look, there's a uh, semi truck with the Joker on it. Where are we at on Grinches? Is that Grinch number six, seven, eight, nine? Not sure, but I, you know what I say? The more Grinches, the better. The only thing this parade needs is more Grinches. And the only correct way to end a Christmas parade is with the man himself, Mr. Santa Claus. Santa! Santa! <laughs> So thank you for joining me here tonight for the Waynesville Christmas Parade. Always love to see the, the, the ingenuity and creativity that that homespun style that goes into the uh, local Christmas parade is always a treat to come out here. Maybe someday I will get I will apply again and, and be a part of this parade because it looks it looks like a lot of fun. And uh, you know when I maybe if I get my float. We'll, we'll bring about five Grinches along with us. So appreciate you guys uh, watching this video. Uh, if you like this channel, please subscribe. I travel around the country filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, uh, selling enamel pins. If you'd like to get an enamel pin for Christmas, they're in the Etsy shop. Also doing personalized messages. I can do Christmas messages, birthday messages, anniversary messages, any message you like on Cameo. If you'd like a personalized message from me, check the description of this video. And of course, all that helps keep this parade on the track, this float in the water, and this Grinch high in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.